Welcome back to another episode of Saving Grace. It's another solo pod. I thought I'd treat you. Um, and we're going to delve in today, first of all, about my week and what a week it has been. Um, to start off with, I had to go to Birmingham uh, for a shoot. My manager, Hannah, uh, said she'd drive. And I thought, what a lovely, lovely lady. Like, thank you so much. Saves me getting a train. Um, upon reflection, I should have got that Eastern Rail. Um, to start off with, her coolant light flashed. I'm a woman... Uh, we are women that do not understand what any of this means. We pull into an m and um, couldn't work out how to open the bonnet to start with. Um, it was absolute hell. We had to get the user manual out, which upon reflection also was ridiculous. Um, we then had to ask a random man where the coolant was, uh, to which he said, it's annoying when people get cars and they don't know how to use them. I thought, okay, that's inappropriate. We finally get the coolant in. We're on the road. We're a bit late. So we're trying to make up for lost time. Okay. Um, we see some lights behind us. I say, Hannah, get in the other lane. He's trying to pass you. We get in the other lane. The lights are still behind us. We're getting pulled over on the M25. We do pull over. And I'd like to just preface here that if I got pulled over, my reaction would be, I'll play it cool. Hannah's reaction can only be described as something. It was like someone held a gun up. I pull the window down and all he says is a bit quick. Hannah's next to me and she starts shrieking. Who shouts at a police officer? Are you arresting me? Because it gives them ideas. She then went on to word vomit that she is a law abiding citizen. She got out the car. She gave the man three wrong addresses by accident out of pure nerves um, and then decided to bond over the fact that they were both ginger. It was it was a lot, to be honest. Me and James were in the car screaming with laughter because I've never seen anyone react in that way. Um, she gets back in the car all flustered. She's apologizing. She thinks she's embarrassed me. But I was actually upset that she didn't get arrested purely because I wanted a mugshot of her ginger face on my T-shirt and I wanted to wear it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, then we got to the shoot and I proceeded to tell everyone that Hannah got arrested, which was a stretch, but we're there. So that was the start of my week. Um, I listened to Call Her Daddy as well uh, this morning while I was getting ready and she was talking about how her fiancé constantly snores and how it's one of the most insufferable things that she's ever heard. I snore, right? And I think there needs to be um, some sort of group snore as anonymous, something that we can all go and feel safe because I am constantly in fear of someone now hearing me snoring. I wake myself up snoring. If you walk past my room at night, the walls are shaking. It's, it's so humbling. And it's getting to the point now where I'm thinking when I next date a man, when I next have a one night stand, which hopefully Shouldn't be too soon because the walls are closing. Um, that was graphic. Sorry. But I'm thinking, how do I, do you have to say to someone, I snore? I need you to know right now that I snore and let them deal with that as they will. Because for some people, it's a deal breaker. It's a massive deal breaker. Someone wouldn't sleep in my room because I, they knew I snored and they just weren't putting themselves through that. But I just think, we need to have more justice for snorers. I feel singled out and anxious because I snore. And when I've had a drink, best believe, after my Saving Grace episodes, it's game over. It's game over for the wolves in my house. It's horror. I want to know your thoughts. Do you hate snorers? Do you like, are you a snorer? And have you had any bad experiences being a snorer? Because I remember my ex used to hold my nostrils and suffocate me in my sleep so I'd stop snoring. And I appreciate that. I hope he's well. Um, we're going on tour. And by the time you watch this, I may already be on tour or I may have done the tour. I don't know when this is going out, but I have a lot to say. First of all, on my Palladium date, my mum has requested the Palladium um, that she can go and see Bruce Forsyth's ashes. That's weird, isn't it? And I thought that's a really... He's not there. 
it's literally an incinerated version of Bruce Forsyth. And it's not like you can snort it or anything. Like it's just in a vase. So that was my mum's one request. Um, and hopefully she gets it. Otherwise it will somehow be my fault. Um, so I'm doing the tour. I am nervous. Okay. I'm scared. It's been a year. I feel like I was a bit more timid last year and I have a horrible feeling. I'm going to say a lot of things this year that shouldn't be said, right? Because alcohol plays a part. And for some reason I've become, I, my filter's gone. I don't have a filter anymore. Where was I the other day? I was at, I did a talk, okay, at a skincare convention and I just was releasing shit that just shouldn't be said. So I'm concerned. I want to give you some hints for my guests as well. Here's my hints, okay? One of them has had a few nose jobs and may have had a nose job while they were on this couch. The other one likes to go out of fire exit doors. Another one is the most flexible man to date and he likes pineapples. You'll get it when you get it because that I feel like if you didn't know that is more confusing. Um, and another one I've been strapped to. Take that as you will. And I'm not talking strap-ons as well. I know people in the comments are going to get really funny about that. But I just think this tour, the guests have leveled up. I've leveled up. I can drink a bit more. I've got some great dresses. We're going again for the pink theme. Um, and everyone's coming on it. So I feel like it's just going to be really fun. I can't wait. I can't wait to go back to Dublin. You don't understand. The people in Dublin, I don't know what's in your tap water, but you are feral. And I love you. And I also think that maybe they like me because my name is that like, Grace Barry and they may think I'm Irish. Just a theory. Um, I've been keeping up with the news recently uh, and apparently we're all getting drafted for war. If Rishi Sunak is watching this, I've heard he loves saving Grace. Um, I cannot go because I've had the shits. I can't go. There's absolutely physically no fucking way. If I am on a battleground, I'll try and fuck the enemy. I can't physically do it. There's no way. Imagine me with an AK-47. It doesn't go with the outfit. I don't wear camo. Um, and it's. Ju I just don't think it's a bit of me, to be honest with you. Although I'd love a tan. If I could wear like a bikini and maybe some camo cargos, I could fuck with that. Other than that, I don't know. And also this generation, again, is the wrong generation. Like it would be just TikToks of people going, get ready with me to go to war. Not me on the battlefield. Do you know what I mean? Like we would not take it seriously. There's no way. And if I got trench foot, I'd be fucking out. I don't know if they still have trenches nowadays, but I just don't think it's fair. Why can't everyone just go into a Sainsbury's car park and have a fight and sort it out. That would cure so many issues. Or just a drink. Go to Slug and Lettuce and talk about your problems. They do three for one on Fridays. Or is it two for one? They do two for one on Fridays. And we could all just have a really good time. We're not made for war. We're not our grandparents. Our grandparents didn't have anything to lose. I've got nails to lose. Eyelashes. Who's going to do me a pedi in the desert? I don't know. Do you know what I was thinking, actually? Actually, I had this thought this morning. I would love a school reunion. I am so fucking nosy. I want to go back to secondary school where, first of all, people did not like me. I feel like some people from my secondary school may watch this pod and think, hee hee, ha ha, it's not he he ha ha. I had a hell of a time there. Yeah. So I would love to go back and see what everyone's doing. I want to know what the popular girls are doing now. I want to know if they're dating, married. Do they have kids? What is occurring there? I want to fucking know. I went out to my local pub uh, the other week and I saw loads of people from like people from my area, people from school. And it scared me. I started stuttering because I thought, I know and you know. And now we're in the same place here. It's scary. I'm trying to think about some good times that I had in Nottingham. 
because I'm going back to Nottingham on my tour. I met someone the other day who knows someone that lived next door to me in my final year of uni, right? And that would be fine. But I ne we never spoke to our next door neighbors. We had one next door neighbor who was a really sweet old woman. And she was sweet until one day we had a party and she put a note through our door, something along the lines of, thanks for keeping the music down, not didn't get any sleep. And I thought, first of all, that was passive aggressive. And then when we saw her again, she went, which one of you is on TikTok? And I went, oh my God, an 80 year old woman watches TikTok. Her grandchild dobbed me in. So she knows me by name now as the woman, as the girl that kept her up. So fuck you, whoever you are. You gave me anxiety. I've gone off topic, but there was someone who lived next door to me and they were in the room next to my room and they heard me do my TikToks. And I want everyone to know how much that embarrasses me because what you don't see is I do takes. I do takes of uni. Uni? I didn't retake uni. I do takes of my TikToks. So I'll be like, guy, no. Guy, no. Guy, it's just me saying guys 400 times and I can only imagine how confused that person was that lived next door to me. It's embarrassing. I'm embarrassed. Um... One thing I do want to know is how Ocean is doing in Nottingham. I mean, the club I've spoken about so many times that had chlamydia on the floor. Um, I went twice and it's very like, I don't know about other unis, and I'm sure other unis have it, but it's such like a society place. And societies in uni are like cults, right? They all know each other. They've all fucked each other. You know, the cheerleaders are fucking the rugby. Also, I find it weird that people are cheerleaders in England. No tea, no shade, but it's just a bit of a weird thing to be into only because we're English. No one cheerleads over here. Like you don't see anyone at West Ham with pom-poms. I feel like I remember I went a few times. I was a sexy nun for the first one and I was a sexy sailor for the second one. And it's just such like you'd walk in and people are getting fingered on the stairs you know, people are shagging in front of you, someone's vomiting. And I just, it's such a weird concept that everyone there is fine. And people that I know are still going back there. I'm 24 and people are still going back to ocean. It's bizarre. I, I just feel like uni was such a fun time. I really miss uni. I sometimes see my like um, memories on Snapchat of uni and it's just like so bizarre. The other time, the other week I had a snapchat memory of me and tat and we used to live in this on exeter road in nottingham and it was this it was a street that was filled with like families but no one left their house and i remember once i was on zoom and this was during covid i was on zoom for my lecture and i looked to my right and there was a guy getting carried out in a body bag but they decided to leave his stiff feet his stiff feet out of the body bag and i had to remain as if nothing was happening on my Zoom lecture. It was mental. We had so many mental times. We'd constantly be blackout drunk in that flat. And there was a corner shop right next to our house. Um, and there was this really weird bloke actually who I feel like he was trying to fuck tap, but he was like 60. And we'd always go in blackout drunk for more wine and they'd be like, more wine? And I'd be like, you are correct. And once we got given these random pack of edibles um, that then the guy said they're not that strong so you can take like the whole pack and it was like 12 gummies in there we were like yeah cool um I thought I was physically gonna die for the next seven hours Tat had to go to bed one of my eyes was looking in the other direction I didn't know whether to call an ambulance and it was actually really traumatic and then we did it again the next day but I think I've got an issue at the moment where I'm too scared to sleep with anyone like Jacob Alordi could come up to me and say, let's reenact Saltburn, drink my bath water. And I'd be too scared. Like I'd be too on edge, too scared. I feel like I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I'm out of the game. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have any muscles in my legs. And I know I say I constantly lay down and I do, but like now I feel like there's pressure that I have to impress them. And I'm not reverse cowgirling. I don't have the figure for it. And I've lost a bit of weight, so I really don't have the figure for it now. Like I resemble, um, what's something really skinny and long? Do you know what I resemble? I resemble the Slender Man, especially in this outfit. And no one looks at the Slender Man and goes, I would fuck that. Actually, another topic, 
Love Island All Stars. I hope it's still on by the time this goes out. One thing I will say is why this series is so amazing is that Love Islanders are, they just are inbred. They're just incesty. They just fuck each other. Um, and every single person that come in is like, oh, I've had a thing with them. Why have you had a thing with every single person that comes in? I get it though, because Love Islanders are amazing. But I just think you've been off the show for a year. How have you fit all of this in? And it's not even just sleeping with them. It's like talking stages. An unpopular opinion, I want Callum and Molly to get back together. All right? If I was in that villa with my ex, who I'd just broken up with six months ago, and I saw them getting off with someone else, I promise you I'd go to jail. There is, no, And I'd go for the girl too. Girl's girl has gone out the fucking window. I don't give a fuck about that anymore. I'll take her and I'll take him and they're going in the pool. There's no, I just don't understand how you can be okay with it. I'm not okay with it. And it's weird for me to watch. It's like the other day, Callum was like, let's have another kiss. Is anyone watching? You want them to watch. I know you want Molly to see it. I know you want her to see it. And it's not nice. And also, I want someone to go in for Hannah. She's a scouser. She's got big tits. She's got a BBL. She's got fake teeth. She's the full package here. She is literally a blow-up sex doll. Why is no one going for her? I would go for her if I was in there. I want Megan Barton Hansen to go in. I want Megan Barton Hansen and Georgia Steele to get, to get, oh, to get together. Because I think they're both bisexual. We need some gay shit in this villa. There's none. And I'm getting a little bit sick of it. And I, it's making, I feel like we saw Chris Taylor have a boner the other day when he wasn't able to get up. And I just thought, what am I watching? Arabella, the way Arabella kisses is like something out of Blue Planet. She engulfs the male. It's insane. And also, I feel like, wasn't she with Leonardo DiCaprio? Go back to Leo. You will not find anyone on this program that will have as much money as Leonardo DiCaprio. And I know it's not all about the money and it does help. They say money can't buy happiness, but I think it's, it's nearly fucking there, isn't it? If I was in a mansion, if I was a Kardashian, the only thing I'd be upset about is some of my pat pics. That's it. And maybe my sister's sleeping with someone I've slept with. That's it. That's all. I just, you know, I would like to cry in a Lamborghini as Elbrook would say. And it's currently not happening. Obviously, as we know, I'm single now. Um, and it's just as depressing as you may think it is. It's hellish. It's hellish. I've gone from being single for four years to being in one relationship. And now I'm like, <laughs> like it's hell. Um, I'd like to say that I'm getting men in my DMs, women in my DMs. Um, I'm having a few people trying to shag me on my tour which feels wrong. You know, you can't mix business and pleasure. Um, but maybe I will. The issue is though, the people that message me are 16. Okay. And I'm not about going to jail. If I went to jail, I don't know what I'd do. I'd be someone's, I'd be multiple people's bitch. I can't say no. We all know that. So I would be someone's bitch and I'd have to, I'd have to start. I'd have, I don't know. I'd have to make my own somewhere and maybe do like stand up in the canteen or like, pretend that I'm a psychic and read their futures, you'll be let out in three months, you know? Like, I don't know what I'd do, but I'm not getting anyone in my DMs. And you know, oh, the best way to get over someone is to get under someone. Where? And it's stressing me out. And also the thought of going on a date. I had this talk, actually. I was on a shoot with Philly and I had a talk and he was like, what would be your ideal date? And everyone was like, oh, I like dinner and dinner and like drinks. Who the fuck is eating on a first date? I can't eat. I have retainers. I would have to get out my retainers with a string of spit and put them on my napkin during the day. That's a first ick. And I don't get it. You've got to make conversation. If the conversation's not flowing, you've got to wait for your food to come out. You've then got the awkward silences while you're eating the food. And like, you know, what if they get something like a risotto? Like for me, like that's a bit of an ick if you're getting a risotto on a date um so I just don't I don't understand it I don't get it and I'm not into it my ideal date would just be drinks I want to get absolutely slaughtered I want to make you a five to a ten granted I will sleep with them but sometimes that can be what makes them message you back you've got something in common there I've seen your bits you've seen mine and now we can relate over it. 
I don't know. But like, again, mini golf, bowling, I just think that's the worst, worst kind of date. If you're taking me somewhere where I have to do an activity and you have to watch me individually do this activity and then do a little walk back, that makes me feel fucking sick. It makes me want to it makes me want to get piles and then rip them off. Like that's how horrible that makes me feel. I have I been on an awful date? I once went ice skating with a boy. Um, worst day ever because I can't ice skate and I just didn't enjoy it. I was like, why are we here? I don't get it. I don't really go on dates actually. I, I seem to meet my men in social, meet my men as if there's been loads, fucking hell. But I don't know. I just tend to meet people in social situations. So I feel like that's better. Once I got stood up and this was actually a really, really sad tale. This one time, it was in my first year of uni and I was speaking to this guy called Brandon and we were speaking and he was like, I'd love to come up and see you. So we arranged a date and he was like, I'm going to be there by 6 p.m. I was like, cool. Okay. Like maybe I'll cook you some dinner because you're drive like you're driving from quite far. So I cooked some, and don't judge me here. I cooked some goujons and some chips and like cheese. And I got, I did all my hair. I shaved my body head to toe. I did all my makeup and it got to six. And I was like, you nearly here? No reply. Got to seven. And I, but I didn't double message. I was like, I'm not like that. So I didn't double message. And then it got to 10 p.m. And he never messaged me and he never turned up. And that's the only time I've ever been stood up. And it was really embarrassing because I told everyone in my uni halls, I was like, this guy's turning up like, you know, sock on the door. Don't come in. Yeah, it didn't happen. Um, and then I had to stay and I had to sleep over my friend instead. And it was really sad. And I feel like if you don't like someone, you can air them before you arranged to meet up. Like I'm, I'm a ghoster. If I don't like you, I'll just ghost you. I'll never give you an explanation. Like one time this guy, um, I was speaking to him for a bit and then he sent me a voice note. I'd never heard his voice before. And he had this crazy lisp and I know I've got a lisp now, but he had like the craziest lisp. He kind of sounded like Jonathan Ross. And I was like, cool. The first voice note, I just had to air him after that. And I know that's really horrible, but my name is Grace and with a lisp, it just doesn't work out. He needs to date like an Amy or a Jennifer. He can't date someone with an S in their name. You know, you can't be saying that in the bedroom. So I did have to, maybe I'm just as bad as everyone else. And I do feel bad about that. But times change. I feel like I'm going to Ibiza this year. And I, wanna, I want a man who looks like he's got a problem. I want a man Who's, who's big and tattoos and looks like he listens to techno and, you know, he has a mate who's a barber and he drives a Mercedes. That's the vibe that I'm going for this year. And then we can never talk again. And that's what I really want. And I, I, I feel like I've gone back to my original felon type, but maybe that's fine. Maybe because it didn't work out before with someone who was polar opposite, maybe I just have to go back to my type of felons. Let me in a jail. Don't let me in a jail. I've recently been getting an influx of hate comments, right? I don't know where they've come from. I don't know if this means I've made it. Um, I'd like to, let's just digest some. Someone said, she's cool, but you can tell she looks more like her dad. No disrespect to my dad, but I know that wasn't a nice thing. It means I look like a man. No one, no one births a child unless you've birthed it with like Channing Tatum and go, I'd love them to look like their dad. No one does. And it hurts because I can see it. I know it. And it's so fuck you. Oh, their name is Gen Z. So I should have just taken that. Someone else that I had my hair done. Um, and I had no makeup on. And someone said, I actually thought this was a boy pretending to be Grace. Someone also said, I thought it was Max in a wig. Contrary to popular belief, I don't have a cock. Okay, I want to clear that up now. I don't have a penis. I'm not a man. And I'm not a man in a wig. 
everyone always said like when joe bags dressed up as me everyone was like oh my god i see it what do you mean you see it what do you mean you see a man in a wig and think gk barry that is horror and i'm trying to go on this whole i'm not getting filler i'm not getting botox i'm not getting a nose job you're making it hard you're making it fucking hard i want to sign up to lemon bottle put it in my chin because what I have noticed is I look, have you guys seen Bob's Burgers? The characters in that. My chin is connected to my neck. There's no, there's no jawline. There's no protrusion. It's just all one. And when I see a side view of me, it makes me want to slam my head against the wall. Next one. Someone said, the silly bint is tapped in the head, I'm afraid. What's a bint? What is a silly bint? Why am I tapped in the head? Uh, and do you know what I've noticed as well? Sometimes my videos or like my podcast clips will end up on the wrong side of TikTok and it is brutal. It's like um, Tommy Yasu. I did a podcast with Ami and I said, I didn't know who some Tommy Yasu, someone Yasu is. And I said, who's Yasu? I got grilled alive on Twitter by the football boys. Football boys are not to be messed with. And you know, they're going to be horrible when they have an England flag in their name. Okay. This is how I imagine them. Bucket hat, beer belly, can of Stella, shorts in whatever weather, Adidas shoes. And they are always the most horrible type of men. They phlegm in the street. They spit. They say, fuck them all, Millwall. And they're very, very scary men. And I think that's the type of man who did that. Someone said, how do people find her funny? That's fair. I think that's a fair one. I don't know either. Someone else said, she is so clapped. And that came from a woman. What about the suffragettes, Sabrina? What happened to them? You may have a slight point, but that's not the point. You don't comment it. And it hurts more that it got 400 likes. Geordie J said she's a wrong un. That's also fair. Someone else said sounds like a bloke. I keep getting this a lot and I know I do, especially with my TikTok voice. I know it's quite low. You know, the decibels are low. I sound a bit like a trombone, but I feel like I don't sound that much of a bloke. And now it's made me conscious. Like when I'm talking to guys, I feel like I have to go a few notes higher. Like in Ibiza, I'm going to be like, hello, how are you? Like I'm going to have to really put on a female voice because I'm like, I don't want them thinking that I'm actually a man. Next one. It's a shame. She's just bones. I'm taking that as a compliment. I am taking that as a compliment. Thank you. Cause for a minute there I was getting a bit wobbly, but now I'm okay. I think that's fair. You're all, you're all in, in what's the word? entitled to your own opinion just don't leave it on my videos because i read all the comments okay and don't get me started on tattle you know when i want to have a really you know when you're feeling shit about life in general and you'll listen to more sad music to make you sadder i do a different thing and i read my tattle page and it is so fucking humbling my tattle page started out so nice everyone was like we like we like her she's really nice it's not very nice now. Someone needs to ban Tattle. It's not a fucking nice thing. Anyway, I've got some of your dilemmas here. Or just things you've fucking done that you shouldn't have done. The first one is... Oh, God. I saw my ex-mum... I saw my ex's mum naked before my ex. What do I do? I'd say you shag her. I think she needs it. In what context did you see her naked? Was it on purpose? Because one thing I've never, like some, some of my friends, like their parents will walk around the house naked. Like, you know, it's normal for them to see their parents naked. If I saw either of my parents naked, I would book myself into the Priory and for a six month stay and a counsellor. There's, I would, could not see my, my mother's muff. There's absolutely no way. I, but people are like, yes, you know, she's done it since I was younger. That's crazy. That, it may be controversial. That is absolutely crazy. You could skip, oh, I won't even go into that. Anyway, um, my brother slept with my best friend who only went, who he only went for because of her tips. They were abnormally big. I'm not friends with her anymore because after I was annoyed about it the first time, she went and did it again. 
oh my God, but then got pregnant and wanted to keep it because she thought she was in love with him. I, I won't read the last bit because the last bit is crazy. Um, okay, I respect that he went for her, for her tits. You know, we all love a mummy milker and I think they need love, you know. Um, however, I think... It's very normal for people's friends to sleep with their brothers. I think there's something about an older brother that's kind of fit, even if they're ugly. I remember I fancied one of my friend's older brothers. He had a crazy gap tooth and was really into Doctor Who. Now I would never, but it's because it was her brother. I think it's kind of fit. So I would forgive it the first time. But if she knows that you didn't like that and did it again, I think your brother's dick may have been good. I don't, I don't know but we have to live and we learn, you know? And I sometimes think sisters that are really overprotective of their brothers are weird. Like I'm really, I'm watching Real Housewives of, of Beverly Hills at the moment. Um, and one of the, I can't remember her name, but she forced her brother to break up with his girlfriend. And I was like, but it, it wasn't anything to do with her. It was just, she wanted her brother to move home. Like, I feel like that's, that's weird. Like it's like when um, your boyfriend's mum is obsessed with them. Shag him then. Like it's so it's so weird. And if you ever date a man whose mum dislikes you because she loves her son so much, run, run. It's such a weird red flag. Um, my brother-in-law slept with my friend in the tent we were sharing at a festival. I was asleep and he used me as support to hold himself up brother-in-law so they're with your sister yeah that's fucked that is fucked and also fucked from your friends too anyone you know like married anything like that you just they're out of bounds surely they're out and to use you as support but how do you know if they use your support if you were asleep but sometimes you got to do what you got to do you know tents are you're on the ground there's not much you know it's hard it's an issue i've never fucked in a tent um once I slept with a guy from Grindr, next day I had a job interview and it was him interviewing me. I'm now deputy manager for a major mental health hospital. If that is the case, let me sleep with my managers. The way you've got a deputy manager job, we should all sleep with our bosses. Fuck it. Fuck it. And you know, if they don't then let you move up higher, go to HR. That's what I would do. I wouldn't do that. But I feel like sleeping with your bosses should be normalized to get where you want. Women were shamed for it before. But we all want to be successful. We all want to cry in a Lamborghini. Let it happen. My best friend is gay and so is my brother. And one night my best mate came and stayed at mine. And I woke up during the night to my best friend gone out of my room. I then heard him and my brother having sex. He came back into my room. An hour and a half later, I was sit sitting up in my bed and he walked in shocked hour and a half that's quite impressive and listen you've got to do what you've got to do I respect it I used to live with an alleyway down the side of my house and me and my sister once got fingered by the same guy 10 minutes apart one on top of the other I was 13 no judgment judgment needed and okay there's a lot to unpack here if you were the first one to go in and get fingered, okay, an alleyway's not great, but I think that's what they were invented for. You know, no one can really see you down there. It's a bit hidden. It's a bit dark. Get your fingers out. However, for then your sister to come afterwards, 10 minutes apart, did you both know? That's weird if so. Because there's a lot to unpack and I'm not enjoying it. And at 13, to be fair, I can't judge. I feel like, the thing in my year at school was field parties. You would go into a pitch black field and get blackout drunk and people would get fingered. That was normal. I remember after prom, every, every fucker was getting fingered. I went home early. I thought, this isn't for me. This isn't for me. I think, but it scares me. If I ever have kids and they turn 13, I'm going to be like, if you think you were leaving this house. Oh my God, where were your parents? Maybe it was a house party. Do you know what I got told the other day? I said to someone who's like 17, I went, oh, a house party is still a thing. Cause that was like, you know, if you can't go clubbing, you'd always do house parties. And she was like, oh, not really. We do black tie parties now. 
like tuxedo events. I said, huh? It's like, that's like salt burn. And they, they just do like black tie, like parties instead of house parties. Where, where is, where are the days where you couldn't go in the bathroom because someone's getting fingered and someone else was throwing up in someone's bin and a loaf of bread was being fed to them. That doesn't happen anymore. It upsets me. I feel like that was character building. And you'd be drinking a bottle of apple sours or peach snaps out of the bottle. Those were the days. I want to bring back house parties. I feel like I bars are fun, but clubs are not for me. I don't enjoy clubs. I can't dance. You can't hear anyone. You know, it, and it's full of bougie girls who know they're the shit and I respect it, but it could never be me. It's just not for me. Bring back house parties and invite me. Unless you're 13, then don't invite me. I slept with this guy and after he said, God, you were a lot better than your sister. I looked at him like, what the fuck? He was joking like, he, he, he. Anyway, he stayed. I'm colorblind to red flags. And in the morning he came down and my sister was there and my sister was like, what the fuck are you doing here? There's a common theme here and it's that all siblings sleep with the same people. Why? Unless you're identical twins, then I get it. Because if you're an identical twin, you know, mistakes happen. They could have thought you were them. They were you like, but I wouldn't want to sleep with anyone that my sibling has slept with. I mean, arguably my siblings are like 40, 50, but actually I've got a bucket list. I want to sleep with an older man. I want to see what the hype's about. I want to know. Because everyone's always like, you know, they're always so much better, blah, blah, blah. But if an old man came up to me, gray hair, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it, I don't know if I'd want to go there. And maybe that's my own issue, but yeah, I don't know. Let me know if you slept with an older man, how that was for you. The guy I've been chatting to since July last year and dating for the past few months still has Tinder on his phone, even though we've met each other's friends and families and it feels like we're actually together. Yeah, you shouldn't have Tinder. There's absolutely no way. Absolutely no way. Unless you haven't had that conversation of like, what are we? But if he's introducing you to your parents, surely, surely he needs to delete Tinder. Unless maybe he's forgotten it's there. But you don't forget Tinder's there. Let's be honest. It has that little ding. Like it has the ping and you know it's there. I have, I know loads of people like um, back in the day when I was on Tinder, I'd swipe and I'd just see loads of people's boyfriends on there. And I'd be like, oh my God, maybe it's an old account. And you'd see if you'd match and you'd match and you'd be like, what the fuck? And then sometimes you'll message the girl and she'd be like, no, it's a fake account. What do you mean it's a fake account? That is your boyfriend. It says we're nine kilometers away from each other watch out for your boyfriend. I don't know what I would do if I found someone, something like that on my boyfriend's phone. The fear of cheating is real. It's real because I have a horrible feeling I'd see red and black out. And then all of a sudden I've slashed his tires, burnt down his house and now I'm going to jail. So I don't know. I don't know. I think a lot of you guys need to speak to your siblings and tell them, you guys need a chart in your room with the names of who you slept with so they know. They know not to go there. It's weird. Rosie, would you sleep with any of your siblings? Fuck no, Rosie said. Fuck no. Unless once again, it was like Johnny Depp, then fine. That's like an example. But like, you know, you're not going to see him walking down Chislehurst, are you? Down the old slug and let it down the prince. You wouldn't. You wouldn't see that. And that's the bottom line. Right, guys, I've got a little surprise for you down here. So obviously I'm going on tour and I want to see some nice merch and loads of different types of merch. We've got a girl, Hannah. She sorted out all the merch. She's a real one. She's great. Give her a pay rise. So at first we've got a little poster, which I'm going to sign. Hee -hee. Um, it's just that. I don't know who wants this on their wall, but someone might, you know, for their wank bank. And I respect it. We've obviously got the OG hoodies, um, the little pink hoodies with the SG on the back, little halo, love that for us. And we've also got a new addition, um, a t-shirt with size matters on and the tour dates on the back. Come on, I feel like scissor. Look at that. I'm wearing that by the way, consistently. This is gonna be my fake tan top. And we've also got, I don't know if you guys have noticed, size matters mugs. So you can have your morning brew, you can have, well, you can have whatever you want in this. Tequila. Da, 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 da. I love it. I feel like it's iconic. 
And what I'm going to do... Oh, and we've also got... Look, I've got this stuff coming out my ass. Oh, Jesus. We've got a little Size Matters tote bag because I know you vegans, you love it. And I love it too. If I don't see you guys walking around university in this, I'm going to message your tutors and say that you used chat GBT or whatever the fuck it is. All right? And just for the pod, I'm going to sign some of them now. I'm going to see how many I can sign. My go-to signature is GK Baz with a penis. Sometimes I love heart if they're under 16 um, because it feels a little bit inappropriate putting a penis on that. Do you know what I mean? You know? Right. We'll see how many I can do in a minute. GK Baz. I'm going to put a penis. Come. Nice. Oh. GK Baz. I'm going to do a love heart in case this person's under 16. Baz. Guys, how do celebs do this? I feel like I'm going to have a hernia. Right. G. Oh, that one was big. Me, 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 me. GK Baz. Maybe I'll shake it up and put GK Bazza. I'll put GK Barry on one. Oh, good lord. Okay, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me do one else. This is the mess that I've made. It's going to be actually a very long tour if this is how long it takes. It must be like one per show then. I feel like to win these, you have to come with the most outrageous story. I'm talking you shagged your stepdad and I actually I was going to say I need receipts but that feels weird um I don't know you know no one you can't sell it because no one's going to buy this but you never know maybe one day I'll be like Anna Nicole Smith and you could get about a grand for it you never know aim high ladies GK Barry and I'll put another girthy penis Oh, it bends to the left. Oh, and it will come out a heart. She's a star. Well, guys, I feel like we are coming to the end of our first episode. And I'd like to leave you with some really bold words and motivational words. And that is, when in doubt, shag his dad. If you can't do that, go to the pub and shag a man or woman. And that's it, really. Can't wait to see you all on tour. Can't wait to have some body crans. Um, and yeah, peace and love. Goodbye.